A new year for many people also means a brand new start. And there are many things that we can look forward to this year, one of them being the general elections. We have seen major changes as well as reshuffles in a number of political parties in the past several months, while we also witnessed an uncertain future for Prime Minister Prayut chan -Ocha. So what does the future hold for Thai politics? Looking into 2023, the future of Thai politics remains uncertain, considering major reshuffles and internal conflicts in various political parties. General Prayut chan -Ocha's future as Thailand's prime minister is also up in the air. According to the Constitutional Court ruling last year over his controversial eight-year term in office, Prayut can serve no more than two years if he's re-elected. He has decided to move to the Rom Thai San Shat party with hopes to stay in power, though he has been in charge of the administration for eight years since the coup in 2014. As to whether Prayut will still be attractive to eligible voters, Associate Professor Dr. Tse Tonelwinik from the College of Asian Scholars thinks that it would depend on a few factors. Some of them include how many votes can Rom Thai Sang Shad garner during the elections, whether a group of conservative parties are still on the same side, and how many promising candidates can they bring into their parties. Most importantly, is Prayut himself. If General Prayut is able to stay only two years, then that will be a problem, especially for the coalition. If Rom Thai Sang Chat can gain more than half the majority of the lower house, then that's fine. They can stay and when they want to dissolve the parliament, go ahead, do it. That's just as many of the members say, well, within two years, they can dissolve the parliament, start all over again, or find someone that is suitable to be prime minister and then that person can become prime minister it doesn't matter okay but if it's a coalition will other parties buy this as for the future of thai politics dr jet thinks that each political party will still not have a clear ideology while the campaign policies will not be sustained and politicians will still be switching from one party to another Dr. Jade explains that policies are often not sustained, especially when forming a coalition. Pum Tai Tai's flagship cannabis hemp bill, for example, went through many hurdles despite its promising future at the beginning of their campaign. When the policies were proposed to the people, once they formed the coalition, the policies tend to be shaken because they will have to negotiate and will have to bundle some of the policies together. Some of the parties were able, at least in this government, to still push forward their policies, but still problematic. He also feels that in Thai politics, people tend to choose certain parties mainly because of its key person, more than its ideologies. With many politicians switching parties, Dr. Jen noticed that it often involves personal benefits. And the party would only be helpful when there are certain people, such as party leaders or owners, who will be able to uphold the identity of each person. It's very individualist that people who come to a party will put themselves together when they see benefits especially personal benefit, family benefit, group benefit. Okay. So that's the instability of political parties or Thai politics or even Thai democracy because there's no true democracy that is viewed as developmental for the country and improving the, uh, the lives of the Thai people or of the people in the country. Okay. So that's the... the the unstable part. Okay. When looking at possible prime ministerial candidates, such as current Prime Minister Prayut from Rom Thai Sang Chat Party, General Prawit Wong Suwan from Palang Prasharat Party, Pa Thong Than Shinawat from Phe Thai Party, or Anutin Chan Wirakun from Phum Jai Thai Party, Dr. Jet thinks that Anutin looks most promising at the moment. I think Kun Anutin should be the, uh, the most promising or 
the most suitable among them. Why couldn't you think is the most suitable among them? You see, General Prayut, he is the coup leader. General Prayut, even he pointed his finger <laughs> to General Prayut, say, oh, I didn't do it. It's this guy, this guy, okay? But the whole world knows that they're together. So he's also part of the coup. Kun Pat Hong Tan's uh, political experiences is not known. We, we, we can't say that she doesn't have, or we can't say that she's incapable, but we don't see that. And all along that she has been delivering policies, those were old policies of her dad, her aunt, or the Pua Thai policies. The, 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 we don't see anything new. Kunanutin has been in politics for a long time. His dad is also in politics and grooming him in a way in which a politician is to be. Maybe he doesn't look like a strong figure, but among all, he had some experience. He's not part of the coup. And a person behind him, the PM maker, Kun Ne Win, has done it several times to make a PM. Very clearly made was Kun Apisi. Okay. Mm. So, so that means that overall, Kunan seems to be the most promising. As the general elections are expected to take place this May, Dr. Jade hopes that people have a better understanding of what kind of democracy they really have and will use their rights to choose the best leader to develop the country rather than being swayed by unrealistic policies.